This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, Anil Mall. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into another Hashtag Finance podcast. Uh, this episode, obviously, is brought to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange. I'm Anil Mall in Vancouver, representing the CSE. And today, actually, I am talking to Silas Garrison. Um, Silas is the CEO of HealthSpace Data Systems, uh, which is obviously listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. We actually have not featured Silas on a hashtag finance podcast, but some of you um, who are familiar with our CSE content, you probably have seen our Tech Tuesday, which was hosted uh, by Barrington Miller. Um, it was actually last August, uh, October that we had featured you on Tech Tuesday, along with uh, the CEO of Visibility. So Silas, welcome to Hashtag Finance. How are you? Good, Anil. Uh, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. I'm excited to to dive a little bit more into what HealthSpace does. Obviously, um, Tech Tuesday is a, a smaller platform, and and you know the presentations are quite tight on there, followed by the Q and A. So I wanted to dive a little bit more into what's developed with HealthSpace since past October. Obviously, your share price reflects um, all the success that you guys have had since October, and I imagine your shareholders are quite happy with the way the company's performed. But for anybody that's not familiar with the company, I'm gonna actually have you give them a brief introduction to what HealthSpace Data Systems is. Yeah, absolutely. So HealthSpace at its core, we are a software as a service or better known as a SaaS company, uh, delivering solutions exclusively to the state, local, municipal, uh, provincial market for government. Um, so we're very focused on the government market, which is a very unique uh, clientele to go after. And in fact, it, it, obviously it's a very underserved marketplace from a technological standpoint. So our platform, HS Cloud, is our enterprise cloud solution. Uh, it is one of the only one of its kind uh, for government agencies to utilize. Um, one, they don't have a lot of options when it comes to cloud. Second, our platform allows the government agencies to take HS Cloud and then adopt it in an exact uh, liking as if they bought a customized solution that they built themselves. HS Cloud is very nimble, very versatile, and we have a broad spectrum of customers from departments of agriculture to environmental health uh, and more in between. So our whole uh, ethos, if you will, uh, when it comes to our product suite and what we are trying to do, to do is really it's to help government operate more efficiently. Um, and there's lots more that I can unpack there, but just a little brief intro. Uh, I think that'll do. Absolutely. Salas, you know, for anyone that's that takes a look at any of your recent press releases, uh, they'll consistently see that you guys are signing up state, local government agencies. I think you guys have over 500 uh, state and yeah. local government agencies that, that HealthSpace works with, or I should say the health that are utilizing the HealthSpace platform. Yeah. All across North America. So we have customers in both the U.S. and Canada, um, and so these range in size from you know a rural county with a population of you know 10, 20,000 people, all the way to statewide agencies such so as the state of Florida. Um, the city of San Francisco adopted our platform last year, um, which was actually a huge kind of like uh, uh, win in terms of putting our name on the map. So yeah, we serve agencies both far and wide, large and small. Silas, you mentioned that, you know, obviously the focus with these government agencies is both U.S. and Canada. I'm actually going to jump to a point uh, that I wanted to bring up later. But since you mentioned that, um, it's something that you had mentioned in tech, on, on Tech Tuesday in October. Um, you know, uh, I think there was a question that went around about your traction mm -hmm. compared to U.S. and Canada. And I think uh, you had mentioned that in Canada, it's a bit of a circle. And, uh, you know, it takes a long time for that process to be implemented. Have you found any changes or any sort of improvements in that process over the last little while? We definitely have. So within Canada, what I would term it, and I might have said this on the Tech Tuesday, is it, it, it was a bit of analysis paralysis. When it came to especially the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you know, the two countries do not operate alike. I think everybody understands that. And at a governmental level, um, the U.S. is very segmented into its 50 states, and there's a lot of autonomy within those states. 
uh, within Canada, it was provincial governments looking to the federal government very heavily as to like what to do next. Um, and that caused some stalls uh, in terms of the sales cycles. However, I'm very pleased to say that uh, we're in the, we announced a, a deal with Vancouver Island to adapt our cloud solution just a couple months ago. Uh, and we have several others uh, around on the cusp of closing in terms of Canadian uh, jurisdictions looking to adopt our cloud solution. So I see that tide quickly turning and that kind of analysis paralysis that um, was mainly caused by COVID-19. I think that that log jam is going to break and we're going to start to see a lot of market traction pick up in Canada as well. Fair to say it's nice to see that progress then. Absolutely. Yeah, it is nice. And it also means that, you know, for the kind of all of us really, right? I mean, COVID-19 and the pandemic just changed everything. You know, we're all working from home. We're doing this video interview from home. And I think it's, you know, even those subtle things where you start to see these government agencies, um, I won't say relaxed a bit, but they have more clarity uh, to be able to make a proactive decision, like what software they're going to use. It, it just is, it's kind of soft signaling that we're starting to return back to some sort of normalcy. And I view that just personally as a huge positive all the way around. Yeah, um, you know, before we get into a lot of the stuff that HealthSpace does, obviously the the four different segments of your products, let's start with your background a little bit. So, you know, I was reading up a little bit. You've obviously got, I think, over 20 years background working in this space. If I'm not wrong to quote this, but you were the f you you were the individual that worked on the initial HealthSpace Android and um, Apple based apps prior to your role at HealthSpace, correct? Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Yeah, I got my start actually in high school. So I am, I will, I will call myself a self-taught nerd. Um, I actually taught myself software development when I was in high school um, through just a random uh, series of events and ended up turning that into an actual full-time job pretty early on in my, my life uh, and spent the first 10 years of my career building enterprise web-based technologies for government. But the way that I did it at that time and the way that most vendors in this space still do it to this day is that they kind of start from scratch every time. New customer, new code base, like you're just re-engineering the solution. And it's because government requires such a specification when deploying software. So I actually left that uh, company where I got my start and developed, as you said, uh, the very first of its kind, uh, iPad, Android, native mobile apps for government inspectors like sanitarians to utilize to go out into the field and conduct inspections. Now, as a sole kind of uh, founder and on the technical side, uh, I knew that to bolt in this technology to an existing company with an existing customer base would prove to be a much stronger growth path. And so that's what I did. So sold the technology to HealthSpace, initially became the chief technology officer, it was right around 2016. Uh, but I wasn't done innovating. Uh, in 2016, we actually went heads down back into R&D mode. So we have a mobile application, what we call HS Touch now. Uh, and then in 2016, we started to build uh, our HS Cloud application. HS Cloud is that long time passion and desire I've had to see a better product, something much more innovative and powerful for the government market that quite frankly did not exist before. Uh, that whole notion of having a software developer start from scratch to deploy software, it seems insane because it is. What we do with HS Cloud is that it's one product suite that can be configured, you know, almost infinitely. Uh, and so when we go deploy software, you know, we're just taking the same product and molding it to whatever the government agency specifications are. Um, but yeah, that's my background. I became the CEO in 2018, actually. Uh, after um, we completed the work on HS Cloud, launched that product, uh, the board appointed me to become the CEO to really lead the charge on selling it into the marketplace. Got it. So, so you started off as a software developer, self-taught, kind of building this stuff. Um, what made you as a software developer look at this sort of space that you're in and focus strictly not only on data, but also for government agencies to use, utilize it. It goes back to the very beginnings of how I even started to get into software development. I come from a very entrepreneurial family. 
My dad owned his own business growing up. Um, you know, I had siblings that had gone off and done their own things in terms of starting businesses. And so it was actually a fa- you know, a, through a family business uh, that through a very long story, uh, one of my uh, siblings was actually doing work with government already. Um, and so that gave me a natural door to be open to have an opportunity. I didn't just sit there and wake up one day and say, I want to write software for government. The door was just kind of there. And so as soon as I started to work on that, that pathway, though, I, I developed this deep, deep passion for two things. Technology, um, you know, starting in high school, software development, you just kind of it becomes second nature to you. Um, and the second thing that I developed was a passion for government and just delivering something better that actually transforms their lives. Uh, it's not a platitude to say that you know, the, the work that government provides, especially at a state and local level, uh, really matters to everyday citizens. Like it's what keeps us safe and what keeps us healthy in terms of the food you eat, to the hotels you stay at, to the swimming pools and the beaches you visit. Um, and so all of that like kind of combined, technology plus this like extreme intri- in- in- interest and passion for government is kind of like what led to getting to where we are. Got it. Salas, are there any other key team members that are bringing expertise like yourself to the table that you'd like to mention? Yeah, we have a very, very deep bench, if you will, uh, uh, combined within our senior leadership team uh, from our head of sales and operations, who's been doing this for over 30 years himself. Um, but our combined senior leadership team has over 200 years combined experience delivering the cutting edge solutions to government specifically. Um, so it's not just that we have a really sharp team of experienced individuals. And it's not just that we have a lot of really strong technologists, people who are you know, passionate about technology. We have this really unique uh, team of highly qualified individuals who have spent years uh, delivering solutions specifically for government. And we all kind of nerd out, so to speak, to that whole notion of we're doing something transformative in a space that needs it. Yeah. And, and that takes me back to another thing that you had mentioned um, on Tech Tuesday. It was uh, data is the new oil. Um, you know, I think you said it's not the data that matters, but what you actually do with it. So to that quote and to that point, what what is the, what are the benefits that these government agencies are finding? Not obviously it streamlines the process, but what are the other benefits that they're seeing from using software and products that HealthSpace puts out? Well, at the end of the day, you kind of have to reverse engineer it. What, what are these government agencies trying to accomplish? They're trying to provide, in many instances or in most instances, especially within health departments, they're, they're trying to provide a healthier and safer environment. And I'm not speaking of you know, environment as in like pollution, though it can go that route. I'm speaking of environment, the everyday things that we come into contact with, you know, restaurants, beaches, farms, all of that is regulated and inspected by, you know, health departments and departments of agriculture. And their job and their mission is to keep the public safe, citizens safe, simply put. And so to utilize our platform means that we have to allow them to access their data, to gain rich insights from it, uh, you know, this is everything from the inspections that they conduct to the invoices that they send out. Every single one of these government agencies is it's almost like a business in and of them themselves. They, you know, they're, they're in customers, so to speak, as us, the citizens. Um, but then they have to regulate these private businesses. And part of that pro- regulation comes with oversight, sometimes enforcement. Uh, and all of that means that there's an immense amount of information they have to track, data. And that data typically is representational, meaning that if you have a, uh, a piece of information in our platform, that is representative of something that the government has either done. It, it is either a permit that they've issued or uh, a fine that they've levied. And they have to interact with that information. And then they have to interact with the citizens who it belongs to. Um, so at the end of the day, a big part of this data and, what, and how the government interacts with it is there, the data represents something that belongs to the citizens. And what they're trying to do is create better citizen engagement, which is the whole point of our My Health Department platform, which we can unveil what, like, talk about that in detail. 
But at the end of the day, if you reverse engineer all of that data that they're keeping track of, what they're really trying to get at is better citizen engagement, better uh, oversight of the general population when it comes to the businesses that they regulate and the citizens that they serve. So obviously the government agencies are finding, um, you know, good ways to utilize this technology uh, and this platform. What about the um, private sector? Do you guys have companies that, or, or agencies that are not state government, local agencies that are reaching out to you guys now to utilize this? We have had non, non-governmental agencies and uh, uh, companies reach out to us. The big thing to keep in mind is that the private sector does not have the regulatory oversight that the government has. So our platform is truly tooled for government and government exclusively. And that's one of the big things that a lot of companies fail to realize is that, you know, good software engineers, good software developers, products that exist out there, you know, you think that, oh, the use case seems similar, right? You're going to do a food safety audit. Well, you also, you know, government does restaurant food safety inspections. Shouldn't those two things be the same, right? But the use case is so far different. The end user and what they are trying to accomplish with that information is so far removed. Um, we do have plans to get into reaching the private sector through our My Health Department platform, a portal that is intended for citizen engagement. Um, but that is not the first goal here. Our first goal is to ex- exclusively revolutionize and saturate the governmental market because I cannot understate financially uh, how huge that is of an opportunity that is. And so as my father would used to tell me when I was younger, winners focus, focus and losers spray, meaning that we have to keep our eye on what matters the most. And that is government, government, government. Have that tunnel vision and, 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 you know, reach that goal that you guys have sort of collectively aligned to. Um, let's get into some of the products because, uh, you know, that's obviously a very important part of your business. Yeah. And um, you guys have currently four segments of products that you guys provide. Um, and we'll get into each one of those and we'll end off with HS Pay, which is your latest initiative there. Mm-hmm. But let's start with HS Cloud. Uh, and that's the cloud-based technology that you guys are using. But why don't you talk to us a little bit about what it, what what HS Cloud is? HS Cloud is, and as we get into the other product line, one best way to look at it or visualize it, it's kind of like a hub and spoke. Everything begins and ends with HS Cloud. This is a central um, repository platform that every government uh, agency who is a customer is going to log into to see everything they need from daily schedules of what they need to accomplish down to you know what meetings do they need to follow up with, uh, what businesses are they regulating and how. Um, and in the instances of new customers that we've onboarded, such as public and clinical health, which deals more directly with citizen engagement, you know, this will tell them, you know, what patients do they need to follow up with in terms of contact tracing, um, you know, what kind of use uh, tests have they had come back from the lab that they need to follow up with in terms of positive COVID cases. And so all of this in terms of what does a product do, it helps government agencies organize their information in a way that allows them to conduct their everyday activity uh, with more fluidity and efficiency. Now, when it comes to these government agencies, they are in our platform eight hours a day, 10 hours a day sometimes, because they're doing virtually every part of their daily activities, um, everything from an inspector going out into the field to conduct a sanitary inspection, to a contact tracer, you know, getting on the phone and calling a citizen to, you know, inquire about their health in relation to COVID-19, down to the back office finance folks that have to sit there and generate a thousand invoices for all the restaurant establishment or food establishments across the county. All of that information is funneled directly through our system. And HS Cloud is so powerful and unique because when it comes to the adoption of these type of things, I don't think it takes a a lot of explanation to, to determine that no two businesses are created alike in the same industry. And the same thing with government. You might have two health departments neighboring cities such as the city of dallas and the city of fort worth these are both our customers right next to each other in the same metropolitan area they have slightly different needs slightly different ways that they're going to approach their daily activities 
and they need the system to be able to, with a click, adapt to that change or that nuance. Uh, and that's exactly what HS Cloud does without having to introduce a software engineer. It's really the biggest selling point that we have when it comes to our platform. And an important part to touch on is, is all four segments of your products interact with each other, right? Is that fair to say? Like they're all integrated into each other. Uh, the agencies wouldn't need to have two or three different systems to be able to operate. That is, that is correct. And what's really one of the most uh, unique and uh, revolutionary things when it comes to the government market, we call it an ecosystem. We have built an entire ecosystem with a core foundation built around a cloud platform. But this ecosystem allows them to accomplish virtually everything they need to within from back office to front office, meaning that they can, through HS Cloud, they can actually launch a web platform. And you know, we'll talk about our other product, My Health Department, in a moment. But they can actually launch online citizen, citizen engagement uh, web platforms. And this creates an ecosystem where they don't have to, you know, buy product A for, you know, their back office management and product B for, you know, citizen engagement, which by the way, virtually every other vendor in this space, you have to pick and choose different products that don't talk to each other. And so we've created an ecosystem and you're right. And, you know, that is like the most, one of the most compelling uh, elements of how we've approached building this technology out. Yeah. And then, so let's get into HS Touch. That is the app-based version, if I'm not wrong? That is the app. So that is where I, uh, you know, first came into HealthSpace. That is a technology that HealthSpace acquired from my startup. And it's really simple. It's a mobile app. I, you know, I think everybody can really easily understand that, you know, when an inspector goes out into the field, um, in olden days, you would imagine a clipboard and a checklist, and they're just going down, you know, notating what's right, what's wrong. And then they provide a copy of that back to the restaurant owner or manager. Uh, in our use case, they're just using an iPad app, like you would want to do for virtually most things nowadays. It's so much easier to use technology on your phone or your tablet. Uh, and so that's exactly what HS Touch does. Now, two things about HS Touch that are very unique to us is that surprisingly, especially in the environmental health space, none of our direct competitors actually have a native mobile app for iPad or Android. Uh, it's, it actually shocks me to this day that there's still not a lot of native apps out there for our government. Um, so one, we're one of the only ones to carry that. But the really nice thing for government is that the HS Touch application, you know, we go on and on about cloud and how we're a cloud infrastructure company. However, HS Touch doesn't require internet. You know, with government, it's really important to not always be reliant on internet connectivity because they may be in a rural part of the county or they may have to go and inspect a factory where there's you know, a, a basement and you just don't get cell reception. So HS Touch, one of the key selling points and use case is that it can work disconnected from internet. And as soon as you get a cloud uh, internet connection, it synchronizes back up to HS Cloud. That, that's actually a really neat function because I don't think there's many apps out there, whether they might be in, in this space or elsewhere, to have that functionality to, to be able to still kind of run without internet access. I think it might mm -hmm. only. So that's, that's obviously a, a bonus for you guys. Um, and then there's my health department. And that is more consumer fit focused. Would it be fair to say it, that? The, the term, the industry speaks uh, is, is citizen engagement. So this is for, yeah, so this is for the citizens and whether that be a business owner, um, such as, you know, you may own a, a series of coffee shops in your county. And if you own a business that's regulated by the health department, and side note, health departments regulate over 20 different unique industry types from hotels to daycares, tattoo parlors, long laundry list of business. That means that there's a lot of citizens and business owners that have to interact with their health department on a sometimes almost daily basis. And most of that communication and interaction takes place. If you're lucky, you might get an email address uh, of, an, of an inspector or someone you can communicate with. More than likely, it's going to be snail mail and in-person interactions. And so what we've done is we've developed this portal that allows these health departments to publish information online uh, and to actually launch applications such as if you need to open up a new business or renew your permit, you can go online through my health department 
and you can fill out all that information seamlessly comes back into HS cloud where the government can review it, approve it, reject it if they need to. But it's all about efficiency and citizen engagement to reduce the number of steps that come through that kind of manual, literal paper pushing process. We kind of take that, digitize it, simplify it, um, and it creates benefits on both sides of the aisle. You know, the private sector, the citizens, they benefit because they save time and hassle. Government benefits because they don't have to go chase around pieces of paper or keep track of email attachments all through one central system and one ecosystem. So obviously the first three products that we talked about, HS Cloud, HS Touch, My Health Department, those all came about when, when the focus of the company was contact tracing. They're obviously utilized for more than that, but you guys have now entered the FinTech space with your latest product. Yeah. Uh, which, is, which is HS Pay. So HS Pay is one of those really exciting things that just came out of an aha light bulb moment. You know, as, as you get to see the myriad of data that flows through our system, one of the ones that caught my eye um, early on when we were, when I, in, late 2018, early 2019, I was looking at additional ways to increase revenue um, through, you know, kind of complementary synergistic product lines. And as I mentioned, all of our customers utilize us as a back office kind of accounting system, basically. And in digging into the data, our customers are collecting hundreds of millions of dollars a year all across the U.S. and Canada through these licensing fees, application fees, et cetera. Uh, and the majority of that is being paid through paper check in the mail or cash in person. And so HS Pay is our ability to add one more step into that ecosystem, simplifying so much more for government, creating the digital payment solution that's gonna be bolted right into my health department, that's gonna flow through in terms of data transmission to HS Cloud. Uh, and what it, what it is in simple terms is it, it's, a ch it's, it's a chopping card. It's a checkout process that allows these you know, citizens, private business owners to look at their invoice, whether they got it as a PDF attachment in their email or an actual envelope in the mail. They can go online, type in their information, and whether they owe one invoice outstanding or they have 100, uh, they can pay it all with one click. Just pay for all their invoices. All of that money is instantly remitted and transferred into you know, the government agency's accounts. Uh, HS Cloud and all that information is updated so they know who's paid and when and how. Uh, and so then there's a lot more automation that comes with that. No more ch chasing checks around, bank deposits. And HS Pay actually, because we're kind of the middleman in this payment, we're able to levy a, a, a fee on the transaction. So I think anybody who's familiar with credit cards uh, in any sort of business knows that the credit card providers such as Visa and MasterCard, they charge a fee for you know, utilizing that. And we're able to take a portion of that as kind of like a profit share in the whole um, transaction, uh, which introduces another revenue stream. And as I mentioned, hundreds of millions of dollars is already being collected by our customers uh, manually. As we start to pivot them and deliver this HS Pay solution, we can start to digitize that and create a very steady, consistent, high margin stream of revenue. So Silas, you guys are obviously working with over 500 state and local government agencies. Integrating HS Pay into your current platform or the existing platform, what sort of feedback did you guys get from your existing customers? And I have a second part to that question, which I'll, I'll come back to. Yeah, in terms of feedback, you know, we are just launching this. So we expect to be in revenue for HS Pay uh, this summer. Uh, as far as the feedback we're getting from existing customers, one, they're just so excited. And, and I mean that legitimately, they're excited just to think, wow, like we didn't ask for this and you're actually just going out and developing it anyway. Yes, we would, we would be thoroughly interested in having this adopted. Um, so the feedback has been very positive and um, we're just getting it launched now. So what we're doing is we're trialing it in, in, in about six different uh, existing customers, making sure that we beta test it securely, which we've kind of already surpassed. And we expect to be fully launched and live here in the next couple months with it um, in a couple of uh, target cities that have agreed to onboard this, um, knowing that new products 
government's not always, it is a bit risk averse on that. So they're agreed to help us launch it, get it piloted and trialed, um, which again should be, you know, we're doing it as, as we speak uh, and over the next couple months. Perfect. My second question was actually about the risk involved. And I think you touched on that as part of the, the first answer. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, so lots, lots happening, you know, obviously, since you presented on Tech Tuesday in October, you guys have had continuous news and milestones that you've been reaching January, you had news, um, you know, a contract for HS cloud and pay with Dallas, Texas, uh, Portage County in Ohio, and then February was Wisconsin, uh, Missouri, Illinois, Ontario, Sonoma. So, you know, obviously you guys are, are meeting the milestones. What has your shareholder and investor sentiment been like? I imagine it's been positive, but uh, give us a little what, what you know, because obviously you guys have had a following of investors that have been with you guys since inception in the beginning, but to see all of these steps and, and pieces coming together, what sort of uh, feedback do you guys get from your shareholders? Very positive. You know, we, we get a lot of positive feedback, especially from people who understand that we build a very sticky customer base, you know, government, every one of our customers signed usually a minimum of five-year agreement. Uh, and so it's not just the frequency of the news that we announce and throw out there, but it's when they see that these customers don't go anywhere. We actually have, you know, health base. I came to it in 2016. Health base has been around since the late nineties. Um, obviously we've gone through many evolutions of, of redevelopment, especially technologically wise. Um, but health base being around for over 20 years as a company to this day, we still have 99% customer retention rate. We have retained every customer virtually since we launched, since the company, you know, began. Um, and you see all that and that really, helps to create a lot of comfort in not only the consistency of the user base uh, and the revenue uh, and our, our reputation within the market that we sell into, but now that we have this new revolutionary kind of platform uh, and they see the growth, um, I would say that, you know, generally speaking, we're, we're getting very positive reception. And part of that actually, in terms of recent events, we did close a, a financing uh, in December, six and a half million dollars uh, at which time we did an eight to one consolidation on the stock, um, which really actually, it brought a lot of eyes to, to the stock and to the share. Uh, and what that ended up doing is actually, you know, consolidating this, the, the, the share count and, and actually uh, kind of created a good floor underneath of the stock as well. Absolutely. Um, so what's, what's next? What's next in the next couple of months, six months for, for the company? What can people and our audience look out for? More aggressive growth. You know, we are constantly out there. Um, we've just started scaling up our sales team more aggressively. I had in a couple more heads. And, you know, within the government space, there are just no end to the opportunities. So we're going to stay really focused, laser focused on the few areas that we serve par particularly well, uh, environmental health, clinical public health, agriculture. So those four are kind of our tenants, um, but we're gonna be expanding into other areas of government. Uh, the other thing is that we're gonna be launching uh, a new product that we'll probably uh, talk about here in the next couple, three weeks. Uh, you know, our aim right now is always about government efficiency and how can we create a bigger, better ecosystem to serve a broader market. One of the most astonishing figures uh, is in the US alone, 20 million people 20 million people work within state and local government agencies. Every single one of, one of those people at some point in time in our company's growth can become an end user, a target end user. Uh, you know, we have about 6,000 active users on our platform at any given day. At 20 million potential in terms of what, what the broader market looks like within state and local government. So, you know, feels like the work's only just beginning, but we're gonna continue to innovate on our product line introduce that to new markets within government and really expand our growth. So Silas, anybody, uh, any of our audience members watching, should they want to find out more details about you, your team, what the company is doing, as well as the products, where can they go? Yeah, I would say first go to our website, gethealthspace.com. Uh, we actually just recently launched a, a new updated corporate website. We, uh, you can also download our corporate presentation there, which provides some more details. Uh, and also give us a follow on Twitter, uh, at HealthSpace is our, is our handle. 
uh, and we usually put out some our press releases and uh, do regular updates on social as well. Perfect. Salas, what I usually do at the end of these podcasts, um, I let the guest, which is yourself in this case, um, you know, have 30 seconds to a minute to, to kind of get what you might want to any message that you have for any of your existing shareholders, uh, any potential shareholders that might be watching. So I'll, I'll leave the floor with you for a message to the audience. As far as, you know, the potential shareholders or probably existing shareholders that are watching this, um, I do thank you for your time. It's always, it's just such a pleasure to be able to, uh, you know, convey what it is we're doing and to work with government, you know, not only, you know, if you are investing in health base, you know, in a lot of ways, it's investing in the future. We're helping daily to these government agencies operate more efficiently. And there's growth ahead of us that, you know, is, is so enormous uh, that I wake up every day so excited to just do what we do. Um, and the best days are truly ahead of us. So thank you so much. And thank you, Anil, for having me. Of course, Alice, well said. Um, to anybody watching, uh, I'm Anil Mall with the Canadian Securities Exchange. I've had the pleasure to sit down virtually with Silas Garrison, who's the CEO of HealthSpace Data Systems. We spoke a little bit about some of their, well, their product lineup, their newest foray into the fintech space. And Silas, we at the CSC wish nothing but success to you and your team at HealthSpace. And I obviously look forward to having you back on Hashtag Finance. Uh, maybe in the next little while here and talk about, you know, how HSP has added to the bottom line, how it's helped to further the reach that you guys already have within these government, state and local agencies and uh, finding about more, finding out more about your successes. Awesome. And you know, I look forward to being back. Thank you so much. Perfect. Um, your time is much appreciated and you have a great day. You too. This has been another episode of Hashtag Finance brought to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange. Thank you for liking and sharing our content and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already.